So one of the pieces of this puzzle is the cancellation of uh, good and holy priests by uh, Archbishop Garcia Siller. And uh, one of those priests is uh, known on YouTube anyway as the cowboy priest. His name is Father Clay Hunt. Welcome, Father Hunt. Thank you, sir. I want to tell you, Mr. John Henry Weston, that we appreciate the work that you do for the Lord and for Holy Mother Church. And I want to say hello to all your viewers, tell you how much we love you and give you encouragement, even in the midst of the hardship of these days and unbelievable happenings, that you stay faithful to God and that you make it your business to adhere to the life of Holy Mother Church, the sacramental life of Holy Mother Church, no matter what. Amen to that. So, Father, tell us, you are a, a priest. Anyone who goes to your YouTube channel or you're on Instagram, uh, Father Clay Hunt, um, they know you are a priest who loves Our Lady, who loves Our Lord, who's all about preaching about Jesus and living the life of the faith. Why were you canceled? I'll tell you briefly, I just uh, celebrated 15 years of ordination to the Holy Priesthood that was on January the 10th of this year, so we say it was our quinceanero, as we'd say in Spanish, and I love being a priest. And we recognize that the priesthood is most essentially, uh, it's the oneness uh, with our Lord Jesus Christ, the priest, the high priest, the only priest, and in the mystery of it, it's it's the passion. Uh, so... We're not uh, disillusioned by these bad happenings, even though uh, it's, it's true that they are somewhat unbelievable how things have come to be. And I would like to say, uh, uh, as regards to my individual person, I don't want to get into a he said, she said, no pun intended, but there are many injustices that are taking place in the world today in the in the church and that's why i believe the most critical thing is for you the people of god to be able to as a whole reach a threshold of understanding that as in my opinion saint archbishop fulton sheen would say uh, that you may rise up people of God to put the house of God in order. That's what I pray for daily and desire because I don't believe there is any other way uh, for the vindication of the church in the natural order but through the laity. And I will tell you, uh, I mean, you can... You can uh, research my own particular life through things on the media, but I will tell you, even for my poverty as a man, I have done nothing absolutely against God or against God's people or an offense to Holy Mother Church that would merit or uh, that would warrant, you know, a cancellation. And uh, even though I accept it for the injustice of these days, uh, you know, like they sang to me on the day that I was ordained 15 years ago, you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. And I have every intention, even if I have to be a priest in exile, I've told the Lord many times, I will never go out of my vows to the holy priesthood. That's beautiful. You know, a lot of other priests canceled, but even in this diocese, there are uh, deacons canceled, other priests canceled. Have you seen, I mean, among those deacons, let's say, who we're going to speak to in a little bit, was there something wrong? What, what was their great crime? That's a good question, sir. And here's the great crime. 
because people need to come to understand this. In the midst of these things, sometimes people in good faith will ask me, uh, Father, how are these things possible? Or how could men who are supposed to be holy to God do such things? And I remind them that this is absolutely not unprecedented in the history of, of the people of God. And we go back to the covenant of Moses and the religious leaders, authentic religious leaders to God's people in the covenant to Moses were the high priests, the Pharisees. And I remind people that there was a great tradition of holy Pharisees, you know, men who, as we say and as we recognize, even for our natural poverty, the grace of God is sufficient that even, in fact, men can be holy, and there were holy men. Even in the time of our Lord, although they were few in number, there were a handful of them. We remember those accounted to in the sacred scriptures like Joseph of Arimathea or Nicodemus or Saul of Tarsus. They were holy men. Uh, but the majority of them and the vast majority of them were seduced and freely given themselves into greed, lust, power, envy. And that is precisely what drove them to be in the first degree responsible for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they were the ones. You know, I, I never, I, I knew it, but I never deeply understood it that throughout the entire scripture, even in these days, uh, throughout the entire gospel, even in these days of recent, how many times were the, the Pharisees explicitly against our Lord Jesus Christ? How many times was he trying to hide from them in order, not because he was afraid, absolutely, but because he knew their wicked intention? And that's, that's the number one problem that we're dealing with in our time. I like to call them the modern day Pharisees. And although they are authentically in that place, it's the same spirit that possessed to those men in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is far more insidious in our time because it's not isolated to the Holy Land, it's worldwide. And it's surpassing in insidiousness to the times of old. That's why I call these guys of the modern era the, the Pharisees on steroids. And, and their bad behaviors can neither be understood logically because it's illogical. It doesn't make sense to a person who has faith to God and who thinks in in logical manner. Evil is unintelligible. It has no, no authenticity of reason. It's irrational and wicked. But that's exactly what, where we find ourselves. And these, uh, you know, tremendous cancellations will not be able to be understood uh, in a rational or logical manner because in its essence, it's of wickedness. To, to put some flesh on those bones, I know that in this diocese, there's all sorts of, even priests, who are doing things that would merit cancellations. Uh, some involved even in, in homosexual, sexual uh, things that have been public. Some who have, um, you know, there have been Catholic uh, education centers who have taught LGBT propaganda against the church's teachings. There are pro-abortion conferences with, with nuns present. There are um, even, um, there's, there's, even during COVID, there was an absolute prohibition on receiving Holy Communion on the tongue, which is the right of the faithful. Um, 
there were, uh, you know, these ACT conferences, Catholic conferences that uh, had, you know, uh, testimonies with LGBT people and things like that in, in, a, in a way a contrary to the church's teaching. None of those were canceled. None of those priests are canceled. In fact, one of those priests is brought into the diocese from another diocese where he was canceled. And yet yourself, other good and holy priests are canceled and good and holy deacons are canceled for the reasons of doing what you should be doing as priests and deacons. Uh, that's true, sir. And they're one of the one of the insidious roots to to what would make possible for men to think in such a way in this problem absolutely i i can tell you that <clears throat> i truly love uh archbishop gustavo and we worked together for for years uh you know i was serving in the far west of the archdiocese of san antonio that's called the Uvalde ruled deanery and I served as dean there for six plus years so I had to work very closely uh, with Archbishop Gustavo and when he came out of Chicago is that was in 2011 uh, you know he's a charismatic person and and uh, we we were rocking and rolling if you if you want to say like that and and I was happy to serve with him and uh, but unfortunately to, you know, to things and th this, you know, in, in human, uh, nature, human disposition, I mean, you can have, uh, certain poverties that, that, uh, I mean, that's just like a natural thing, dislikes and things like that. But what we're talking with, and this isn't isolated to just one particular region or, one particular area people need to understand this this is a tremendous systemic problem in the church widespread and as you mentioned briefly or as you alluded to i believe that one of the the most insidious root causes of these things or what is a common thread is is homosexuality you know in the priesthood in the hierarchy and even all the way to high seats, high positions. And what's how does the old saying go? There's uh hell hath no scorn. No fury like a woman scorn. Yeah. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorn. And that's uh, you know, there can be truth in that statement, but there is something even surpassing to that. Hell hath no fury like the whole the scorn of a homosexual man <laughs> and and that's why i mean when when persons first of all there is absolutely no room in the priesthood of our lord jesus christ for a man of that disposition why why is that because it's so powerful and especially if a, a man has given himself into that sin it's 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 so uh, it's so powerful that it's surpassing to any other temptation. And uh, the devil, the enemy himself, is able to, to use those things. And obviously, there's no more important, uh, you know, spiritual position than for a man to be in the priesthood and and therefore he a man of that disposition and especially one who has given himself into those things it is it is impossible for him it it's directly in opposition to the priesthood of our lord jesus christ and so even if a man has certain good intentions uh he can't handle the spirituality of the priesthood and the responsibility of the priesthood uh, in that way. And all the, the scandals, especially the sexual scandals that have taken place in the church, it finds its origin in uh, homosexuality. 
one of the things, and, and probably we'll end here, one of the things that um, it certainly seems with the Sanctus Ranch cancellation, th there seems to be a tie-in to the Latin Mass. It was, you know, cancelled uh, in certain other parts of the diocese here by Archbishop Gustavo um, in, in, in the Ordinariate Parish, for instance, and in other places. And here that seemed to be a focus. This is one of these refuges, if you will, that, that people who wanted the Latin Mass could come and receive it, the Latin Mass in this area of Texas. That seems to have been a focus, perhaps, of, of the cancellation. Any, any thoughts that way? One thing that's important to, to realize, especially to, to the lay faithful, I was born in 1972, so that was just shortly after uh, the suspension of the traditional Latin Mass. And, you know, in, in its essence, that was an insidious move because we recognize that through the, the guidance and the intention of the Lord himself, that's the Holy Spirit, the church through the centuries came to, to that crescendo or perfection, if you will, of worship to God which we know is the traditional Latin Mass. And that's, that's if you want to say, the full power. So just look at, we were talking about it yesterday. You look in the, the 1950s, late 1950s, uh, mass attendance among Catholics was higher than 80%. Uh, that's amazing. And just a brief few decades after the cancellation, if you will, of the traditional Latin Mass, the Novus Ordo, in which I grew up in, it's not the bad intentions of persons, but it's the neglect of the things to God that result in, in our, to, to our tremendous detriment that now only the statistic is 8% of Catholics go to the Sunday Mass weekly. I mean, that's, that's indicative that there's a tremendous problem. And so these movements, which is, again, systemic in the universal church to cancel the traditional Latin Mass in its origin is demonic. And, 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 and that manifests itself in however it plays out throughout the world but the the one who truly desires and the only reason is because in fact it is the fullness of worship and holiness to God the one who desires the cancellation of the traditional Latin mass is the enemy himself and then either in full cooperation or unknowing cooperation is being played out all over the world. What keeps you going, Father, despite being canceled? I believe in God. Amen. Father Clay Hunt, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. God bless you.